have anything in particular in mind today for this live stream other than to get on here and continue with the activity so if you have any questions feel free to ask I'll answer as you know or maybe you don't know you can go to my bio and find links to my YouTube channel and to my email address if you're interested in learning the technology known as correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar i.e. quantum grammar shoot me an email but include your full correct name at the bottom of your email so that way I know that you take authority on it over your words you know my full correct name I just ask the same consideration of you did you know wait I got I gotta look this up before I make this statement hold on I gotta look it up okay got it in the past tense United States and the reason why I say past tense is because united ed at the end is past tense so in the United States past tense in the state of Oregon they passed a law where it is no longer required to show proof that you have the capacity to read and write to graduate 12th grade Yes, you heard me. In Oregon, it's no longer required that you provide proof or evidence that you know how to read and write in order to graduate high school. That is not a joke. As if the reading and writing uh, level of this country is not bad enough, they're making it worse. <laughs> And they also said that this was in, out of consideration for cultures other than Caucasian. Well, I guess Caucasian is a race, but they don't use the word race. But they say out of consideration for blacks, Hispanics, blah, 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 blah. They're no longer requiring that you show proof that you could actually communicate in order to graduate. Unreal. What do y'all think of that? And by read and write, of course, we mean plain, simple English. Now, if you look at the quality level of the comments section of any social media site, whether it's Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, what have you, the level of grammar is not what it once was matter of fact it's like first and second grade level people don't know how to spell correctly they don't know the difference between t-o t-o-o t-w-o they don't know the difference between l-o-o-s-e and l-o-s-e and so on and so forth they don't know the difference between a-c-c-e-p-t and e-x-c-e-p-t i could go on down the line it's horrendous, the level of education that is now the standard in North America. And then in Oregon, they go ahead and pass that law where you don't got to prove that you can read and write in order to graduate. They'll give you your diploma, even if you can't read and you can't write. It really does stretch one's incredulity or actually it stretches one's credulity to see things like that. However, when you graduate, you're either 17 or 18. I myself was 18 when I graduated high school. You can have a choice. Well, you do have a choice. Even before then, you have a choice to educate yourself. You can choose to learn how to read and write. Not only that, you can choose 
to learn how to read and write with correctness with a mathematical interface. That's your choice. Nobody's forcing you to do it. But that's the beauty of it. It's a choice. So even the conveyance of fraudulent language being spoken, written, or taught is being corrupted. Well, I mean, if you take into consideration the scenario of particles of negation, past tense, future tense, and no contract words, the corruption's already been there. The corruption's long been in place. It's like if you take a piece of fruit that's rotten, I mean, I guess it's a, it's a matter of you have one bruise on the apple as opposed to the whole thing falling apart and worms coming out of it. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go that far with it. And the whole, you know, the legal system, you have legalese. Everything has been degraded. I mean, it's my position that the entire legal system was rotten from the get-go. From the time of its conception, it was rotten. Not fair. And all about money. Because the people that run it are a part of a private club that you have to pay to get into. And you have to have a certain level of fiction knowledge in order to get into that club. I.e. the Bar Association, i.e. Legalese. If a regular citizen, and I do mean citizen, because you have to be a citizen in order to go into those courts, those foreign vessels and dry dock, the average citizen has no clue about legalese. That's why you have to hire an attorney. Well, actually, you don't have to. But they want you to have one. They want you to have one so much that if you can't afford one, they'll give one to you. Because nobody possesses that kind of knowledge. It's a specialized type of knowledge. And even today, the knowledge level of attorneys and lawyers have all, has also been downgraded. Because at one time, an attorney could handle any case. But now, it's all specialized and compartmentalized. You have your, your civil lawyers, you have your uh, divorce lawyers, your custody lawyers, your real estate lawyers. They're all specialized and... And it's all about making money. You get a consultation with, a, with an attorney and they're like, well, you know, I don't handle that, but I got a buddy who does. And then they send you over to their master mason buddy or whoever it is. It's all a buddy-buddy system. All of it. You think I'm kidding. I'm not. That's the cool thing about correct sentence structure. You don't need any of that. You don't need any of that balderdash. You become your own authority. These right here, this is a seashell, and, a, and shells are from Pensacola Beach, the Gulf Coast, one of my favorite places in the world. The other cool thing about choosing to cultivate one's knowledge is that there really is nothing hidden. If you possess the willpower and the tenacity to research things and you don't get easily discouraged, you can learn anything you want to. Nothing is hidden for very long. They can try to hide it, but if it matters, you'll be able to find it. That's what I've found anyways. And if it doesn't matter, I don't mind.
As always, if you want to see a replay of this live, go over to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Jason Matthew Glass. You can find a whole playlist of my TikTok videos over there. And no, I'm not reading that off of a cue card or anything. I just know my, e my uh, YouTube um, location at web address off the top of my head. Just like I know my email address, just like I know a lot of other things because I use them every day, multiple times a day. Because this is what I do. I teach correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax, grammar. Well, I'm not teaching it right now. Uh, I'm teaching other things about the legal system and stuff like that because no one's asked me a grammar question actually. So I haven't really been talking about the grammar too much. If you want to learn correct sentence structure, a good idea right now in order to start would be to think about what a fact is. Think about what certifies a fact to you. Make a list of things like boxes, like a checklist. A fact has to have this, a fact has to be that, a fact has to do this and do that. And make a list of those things and then apply it across the board to everything. For example, this shovel. Apply your checklist to a shovel. Does a shovel check, tick all the boxes? Cool. If it ticks all the boxes, then it's a fact. That tree back there, does it tick all the boxes? Cool, okay, then that's a fact. How about this shirt, does this tick all the boxes? All right, cool, that's a fact. How about the sky, does that tick all the boxes? How about the clouds? Yeah, okay, then we can participate with those as facts. How about a ghost? Does a ghost tick all the boxes on your fact list? Probably not, so therefore that's not a fact. So on and so forth. That's something a lot of people have trouble coming to grips with. I think a lot of you would be very surprised what you take for granted or presume or assume to be true really actually is not provable and is not actually a truth. It's actually an assumption presumption. I mean, that's up to you, whatever you want to believe. The problem comes when you have to certify that to another contract party. If you cannot provide a continuance of the evidence for what you are claiming, then you're not claiming a fact, you're claiming an opinion. And we all know what they say about opinions. And we all know what they say about assumptions. I'll go over real quick uh, some of the requirements that you need in order to use correct sentence structure, communication, parsi, syntax, grammar. You need a correct claim of the live life. A claim of the live life is when three or more live life claim witnesses come together to certify that you are a live life creature. And that document contract postal vessel court venue must include correct flag mechanics, correct postal mechanics, correct grammar mechanics, and correct banking mechanics. In order to actually use it, you have to be able to certify all your facts as correct. Provide a continuance of the evidence. You must have your own correct sentence structure dictionary. Yes, it's a lot of work. My dictionary has almost 2,000 words in it and it has a styles manual. And this is a dictionary and styles manual that governs my construct. All written in correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, technology. When you use someone else's dictionary, that means you've given jurisdiction to your words to whoever the author is of that dictionary. That's why it's a good idea to create your own. Does postal mechanics fall under maritime admiralty jurisdiction? No. I mean, if you want it to, it can. But I choose not to. 
the postal mechanics, uh, for the way I use them, are neutral jurisdiction. I'm the document contract court authority, i.e., in the fiction, that would be called a judge. Someone could, could actually say federal postal judge, although I don't claim that title. Because to me, the word judge is a fiction title. I use the term document contract court authority. And then when I go to the postal station, the clerk at the counter is my postal clerk. When they do their stamping, they're my clerk. They're a custom clearinghouse broker. And I'm transshipping my documents, my document contract postal vessel court venues through their custom clearinghouse. I've authorized them to do that. Also, if you, okay, I've already established that you need to have a correct claim of the live life in order to even use this grammar. And by correct claim of the live life, I also mean you are the copyright copy claim holder of that document. Not anybody else. You're not a copyright co-holder of it either. In order for you to have complete 100% total authority over that document, you are the copyright copy claim holder. And if you happen to possess a live life claim that you bought from someone, then 9.9 .9 times out of 10, that means you are not the copyright copy claim holder of that document and you didn't write it. And you have no authority over it because authority comes from author. Author means you created it, you wrote it. And if you didn't create that live life claim, it ain't yours. That's just simple logic. But on top of that, what I mean by flag mechanics is you have to use the correct 1 by 1.9 ratio for the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, flag, the flag of the land during the time of the contract. And you must also possess the correct grammar constitution for that flag. Now, by possess, I don't mean you own it. No, I don't mean that at all. I mean that you have it on hand so that you can produce it if called upon to do so as a continuance of the evidence. The easiest way to get the uh, flag constitution, I guess, would be to find uh, an old copy of Colin David Eiffelman Colin Miller's website. Go on the Wayback Machine or something. The flag constitution is on there. Take that constitution and correct it because there are mistakes all over it. Grammatical errors, spelling errors, spacing errors, so on and so forth. Take it and correct it. And then you'll have the flag constitution. Where do I start to learn the correct sentence structure? Where do I start to learn the sentence structure? Well, you can go to my bio, click on the link to my YouTube channel and start there. There are almost 900 videos on there of correct sentence structure knowledge. That'll probably get you about 75 to 85% there. And if you're really, really, really super serious about it, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. Again, that link is in my bio to my email. And you, you can apply for a correct grammar workshop. I've been teaching since February of 2018. Hundreds of people all over the earth. It's what I do. I teach this correct grammar. Shoot me an email. Please include your full correct name. You know who I am. I just ask that uh, you apply the same consideration to me. And I'll set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation and we'll see if this is something that you're really committed to do. You've seen David's three hour video. Well, David has hundreds, literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos on the internet. So I'm not sure which three hour video you're talking about. There are dozens of them. But again, if you go to my channel, you'll find almost 900 videos you'll find playlists, parse playlist, a syntax playlist, correct sentence structure playlist. And again, if you're motivated to learn it, you'll find a way to learn it. It's all free to the public. My gift to you, thousands and thousands of hours of work, editing, shooting footage, all done by me. I'm a one man show. I did everything. And you content creators out there, you know how much work goes into that stuff.
I've been doing it since February of 2018, going on six years now. And if you're wondering about which videos to start with, if you go to my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com forward slash Chase and Matthew Glass, go to the playlist section and maybe start with the mini class playlist. And you'll find short little bite, well, they're not short, but like bite-sized uh, classes on it, like classes on syntax, parse, correct sentence structure, uh, introductory courses, things like that. But if you want the real deal, if you're really serious about it, if you're one of these people that is ready to step up onto the geometric level playing field of contract, email me and I'll set something up and uh, we'll get you going taking classes. It's just like walking into a classroom, only it's you and I, and the, uh, the curriculum is tailored towards you, your knowledge level. I teach everyone from beginner, intermediate, to advanced. So if you want any information about those workshops, please contact me in the confidential at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. You can also check out the rest of the content on this TikTok channel, which are basically just uh, little three and four minute uh, tidbits of my longer YouTube videos. So real quick, the mathematical interface on grammar, when I say that, what I'm talking about is, for example, the equation 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. As you can see, the same factors are contained in each side of the equation. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 1. The equal sign remains the same as well. The only thing that's different is the plus and the minus. With correct sentence structure, there's a part of speech called the positional, and there are four positionals, for, of, with, and by. They serve the same function as the plus and the minus in that mathematical equation. For is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. So you say for the facts, of the facts, are with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. Works the same way. And if you don't know anything about correct sentence structure, then I'm sure that doesn't mean anything to you. But if you do know something about it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Again, you can check out my YouTube channel, link in the bio, or you can email me, link in the bio. And please include your full correct name if you email me. Got my little business card here. If you're ever out and about in uh, Florida, Pensacola, Tennessee, Kentucky, Knoxville, Louisville, uh, Nashville, Tennessee. You might find that business card in some of those local stores. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining me. Appreciate those couple people that uh, stepped up and commented. Hopefully, as we go along, we'll get more people uh, who aren't shy and will step up and ask questions and things like that. I just ask that you be respectful. Uh, no trolling, which I have never really had any problem with trolls on here. Maybe once or twice, but I think they know better. You're very welcome, Titanium Black. Appreciate that, that sentiment there. Thank you for your viewership. Again, go check out my YouTube channel. The sum total of my correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, knowledge is contained in its entirety on that YouTube channel, free to anyone who wants to watch. Do you teach also in Germany? Well, I mean, I don't travel and teach. Uh, that's not financially feasible. Unless, of course, you want to fund me to do that, I'd be open to that discussion. I'd definitely do seminars and stuff like that, travel and do them in person if I were, to, were able to support my family doing that. Uh, but as it stands, I teach in the now space. I teach via video Zoom workshops. 
So the short answer to that is yes. I teach in Germany. I teach in Australia. I teach in New Zealand. I teach in Mexico. I teach in Brazil. I teach all over. If you have access to the internet and you have the Zoom application, I can teach you no matter where you are. By the way, also, for those of you wondering about the live life claim or the claim of the live life, the claim of the live life, it is, um, how can you say this? You can have a claim of the live life regardless of what country or location you're in. It doesn't matter if you're in Canada, if you're in Germany, if you're in Russia, if you're in Antarctica, the claim of the live life is earth wide. It works anywhere. And that stars and stripes flag that you see on the documents, if it's one by 1.9 ratio, it is not the American flag, the American flag. It's not the United States flag. It's the flag of the land during the time of the contract. It's the correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar flag. Keep that in mind. And I know this. For a fact, that is a fact. Jack, thanks for joining me. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like, and I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Uh, hit the Subscribe button. Hit the Like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.